When we discussed bonding earlier, we used electronegativity to figure out if a bond was nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, or ionic. And we said that we can put bonds into those nice, neat categories. But in reality, it's kind of a sliding scale where you can consider a bond being more or less covalent or more or less ionic. A purely covalent bond would be very covalent and have very little properties of an ionic bond. And a fully ionic bond would have all the properties of an ionic bond and very little of the properties of a covalent bond. And a polar covalent bond would be kind of in the middle. It would have some of the characteristics of a covalent bond and some of the characteristics of an ionic bond. The Zoom dolls in their text show a measurement called partial ionic character. They're showing you how ionic a bond is, and it's a scale. If you have very little ionic character, then that would be the purely covalent bond, and if you have a very high ionic character, then you would be a fully ionic bond. And when you use this scale, you get some interesting results. Here we have two different ways to denote whether a bond is polar covalent, purely covalent, or ionic. On the x-axis of this chart, you can see that differences in electronegativity are highlighted. And when we talked about using differences of electronegativity, we said two was a threshold from being an ionic bond to merely a polar covalent bond. The Zoom dolls also talk about this percent ionic character. And on this scale, they say anything that's over 50% ionic character would be considered an ionic bond and anything below 50% would be considered a covalent bond. And then the closer you get to zero, then we would be considered a nonpolar covalent bond. And what you will see is that you get some interesting regions of this scale. Hydrogen fluoride is right butting up next to the electronegativity difference of two. Hydrogen with an electronegativity of 2.1 and fluorine with four. So this electronegativity difference is at 1.9. And hydrogen fluoride was an example of a very polar but still covalent bond that we talked about previously. The interesting ones here are things like potassium iodide, lithium bromide, lithium iodide. If you look at their differences in electronegativity, these bonds are actually less polar than the hydrogen fluoride. By differences in electronegativity, we would consider these bonds to be polar covalent, just like we did with hydrogen fluoride. However, if you look, these are combinations of metals and nonmetals, which we said earlier makes an ionic bond. Which is it? Are these bonds ionic or are they polar covalent? And the answer is eh. This is the gray area. I would consider these bonds to be all ionic. We have a metal combining with a nonmetal. We know that metals like to lose electrons, nonmetals like to gain electrons, and that's our definition of an ionic bond, a transfer of electrons. If you look at their difference in electronegativity values, however, these bonds would all fall under the polar covalent. I could probably argue both sides of the coin, but what the zoom dolls are showing with this measurement of percent ionic character, because of these bonds all fall over the 50% on their percent ionic character scale, they comfortably say all of these bonds are ionic, even though their electronegativity values don't reach that threshold of 2 that we described earlier. Just different ways to define what an ionic versus a covalent bond is. The electronegativity values are a good guideline, but they're not the only story. I still fall under the camp of when I see a metal and a nonmetal together. I'm pretty comfortable calling those bonds ionic.